Today we will be discussing different ways to apply boning to your outfits. So one of the methods is a direct method. So this is my rigidling boning and you would make sure that it is shorter than the length of wherever you are sewing. So for example, if you are sewing it on a seam and your seam allowance at the top is half inch or one centimeter, half inch at the lower or one centimeter, you would make sure that you're adding an additional um, quarter inch to the measurement. So for example, instead of leaving half inch, you're going to start sewing this at five eighths of an inch and if it's one centimeter that you have you will start sewing this at about 1.5 or 1.7 centimeters so that there's room for this um your boning so to seal the edges of your boning you can either do it one of two ways i have my lighter here so you can seal the edges by burning it Because this would make it very, very smooth and it's not going to be harmful to your clients. Or you can apply a paper tape. Okay, so I have rounded the edges, which is very, very important. The edges should be rounded so they don't poke you. So this is the, this is what I showed you that I used um, the hemming tape to secure my calico fabric to this fabric and i'm just going to start sewing so remember i said that you should leave some you should leave it a considerable distance between the top and the bottom but not too much so i'm going to use contrasting thread and what i want you to note about regional bone is that there are two sides that you can sew on at the sides so if i bend it like this there are sort of like fabrics at this side and this side so that's where you are sewing along I have sewn this and as you can notice it's sort of curving um, inwards so usually what happens is you would apply this in a way that is going to follow the shape of the body or you can just use your iron to straighten it out so this is how it looks like on the right side so you can apply this to either your lining or you can apply it to the main fabric so in this case this is the main fabric that we are working with this is the second type of sewing your corset together so this usually happens when you have sewn the main um the main fabric you've sewn all the pieces together and the lining fabric you've sewn all the pieces together and what is left is just an opening at the lower part so you've attached it at the upper part and so what usually happens is that you can just place them together like this and just sew the channels together so what i mean by sewing channels is you would take it to your machine and you will sew the first channel and then based on the width of the rigeling that you want to put inside, you would measure out and sew the second line and you would insert your boning inside. So this is useful when you're working with plastic boning. So I've gone ahead to cut my plastic boning and 
there's no way you can sew on this with your machine so that's why this method is very important so this is also the method that is used for a lot of oh, underboss corsets almost all underboss corsets go with this technique so what i have now is my sandpaper and you are just going to sand it until you have until you have a rounded edge very very important so some people also use lights i don't use it often but let me just show you this So because it's plastic, it's going to form a curved shape and it's sticky for a while. So you have to let that dry. I'm sure you can see how sticky it is. You have to let that dry and basically you have a curved edge. So I have this one here using sandpaper and I have this using my lighter. So after that, what you just do is you would insert this inside. Just insert it into the channel. So to get the accurate length, like I said before, you need to leave allowance at the top. So when you sew the allowance, this is how it will look like at the end of the day. So this is the second method of sewing your boning. So another method of sewing your boning is by using the seam allowance. So the seam allowance I recommend when sewing your corset is using two centimeters. So that you have enough channels to, you have enough allowance to sew your boning channels. So what I've done is I've sewn the corset pieces together. That's the same here. And then I have sewn the channels based on the size. So I'm going to be using a rigidling boning for this lesson. So because that's why it's really bigger. So it's a little wider. So if you're using the plastic boning, you would make it a lot smaller. You can use any type of boning for this technique. So again, you would make sure that if your seam allowance is half inch, you are leaving five eighths of an inch at the top and at the bottom. So after sealing the edges, you are just going to put the grigiling boning inside your channels. And this is how it looks like on the right side of your boning. So this is actually very common and it, this particular one helps with a lot of tightening because if you add this two side by side and you add a plastic boning inside as well, you're going to have the ultimate structure on your corset. So this is method three 